Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again, man. Um, look, I wanted to, uh, I didn't get a chance to do the video, uh, yesterday. As you all know, uh, God, I hate, I hate, like, you know, this, this year, I mean, just since the pandemic, it seems like a lot of, like, people have really left us in this world. Like, a lot of people have gone and passed on. And, you know, it is, it's crazy because I was just talking about this player to Mark the other day. I was like, you remember the tight ends that we used to have and stuff like that? It's funny how you bring up somebody and then you hear news about them passing away. So, sorry I didn't get to do this video yesterday, but Gavin Escobar, I know you guys already heard. Um, he passed away yesterday uh, morning, actually. Morning, afternoon-ish time. Um, but I didn't know that he... Um, I thought he was still in the league. I thought he was, you know, still bouncing around different teams and stuff like that. But um, uh, he ended up uh, joining the fire department, or I think, earlier this year or earlier last year or something like that. And um, he was a part of the uh, uh, one of the uh, California uh, fire departments. And um, shout out to him, man. Like, you know, maximize his opportunities. You know, after football – still trying to, you know, find a, a good career for yourself and, like, you know, for somebody that inspires to be a first responder like myself. And, like, I want to be a first responder, too. Not necessarily fire fighter, but, but yeah. But, like, you know, like, I have a lot of respect for first responders and stuff, you know, and, you know, fire, you know, police, medical nurses and stuff like that because, you know, those are all tough jobs. You know, we take that for granted, but they're definitely tough jobs and, and it's a lot of bravery that, that ensues with them, but, um, you know, he, he was, uh, not working, obviously he was off duty. Um, he was rock climbing with a friend and actually the girl that he was with passed away too. So I don't know the full story. I just know that, um, they said something about, I guess they fell or something and it was just a tragic accident, man. And it just sucks to hear, you know, somebody, a good guy like, like Gavin Escobar, you know, you know, passing away like that, like, you know, and I was just thinking about him, too, because I was like, damn, I would love to, you know, have him on the team again. I know um, he only scored eight touchdowns in the four years that he was in his rookie contract with the Dallas Cowboys. But, you know, he, you know, went around a couple of different teams. I think he was with the Dolphins at one point in time and uh, I think with the, the Chiefs. And he's with a couple of other teams for a short amount of time. Yeah, the Ravens. Um but you know the longest his, the longest time of his career was with the Dallas Cowboys uh, for those four years and you know um, the four of the seven seasons that he was in the league um, and and one 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 particular play comes to mind when I think of Gavin Escobar I don't know if you guys remember that touchdown I don't I don't remember what year it was or what team we were playing I want to say the Giants because our tight ends always go off on the Giants. <laughs> Um, but he did like a front flip into the end zone and like the way he did the front flip like the ball was like you know you know you know he did a front flip with the ball like down here like that's a hard thing to do that's an athletic play to be able to do some things like that but you know Gavin would definitely be missing man he was a good football player and even a, a better person in general um you know, they always say that the, the good ones always die early and, and the evil people live forever. It's so weird how that works out. But, you know, it, it's so crazy. But, you know, rest in peace to Gavin Escobar and, and much love, prayers and blessings to his family. But as we go forward with the Dallas Cowboys playing against the Commanders this weekend, I will be doing my matchup video um, either tomorrow or Sunday morning before the game. I haven't decided yet, but... Um, you know, as we get ready for the Commanders, we know what the Eagles, the shellacking that the Eagles made on them last week. Um, I think it was like 24 to 8 or something like that, but it was like 24 to 0 for the longest time. And, you know, they almost feel sorry for old Carson Wentz. But I feel like the Eagles had a vendetta against him anyway because he was their old quarterback. And, you know, you know how that goes. And it just, I just feel like the confidence has just left the air out of Carson Wentz because his confidence is not what it, what it, what it once was. Um, he's the guy, you get him um, flustered and frustrated, and, you, and he's definitely going to, he's the type of guy that's going to, you know, 
<laughs> throw an interception or <laughs> get sacked. Um, I'm not going to say just because the Eagles got a certain amount of sacks on them. I'm not going to just assume that the Cowboys are going to get double the amount of that. That's not the way football works. It's any given Sunday, things change, and I'm pretty sure that they're an NFL team. So they're going to make some adjustments. They're going to make some changes according to how the Dallas Cowboys play. Now, I'll talk more about this in the matchup video, but um, one thing that the Cowboys are very weak at is is the screen game on defense. And, um, you know, as, as dominant as our defense has been this year so far, one thing that we're weak at is screen plays, and that's what the Giants did on us like, full on like they would get in third and long situations and all of a sudden the drive just keeps moving because they'll they'll hit a screen play or, or they'll run a, a wheel route for 24 yards and you're like god damn but um but yeah so we'll, we'll talk more about that um going forward in the game uh, michael gallup um they said that should be active in this game he should be ready to go um as far as Dak Prescott and his hand goes, y'all know he got his stitches taken out the, uh, on Monday night, the, the day of the the last game. And, um, you know, he's just dealing with the swelling now. So he's, you know, around there tossing the ball lightly and stuff like that, trying to figure out, you know, where he is. And this is the thing. Once he gets his grip back in his hand, then I think that that's when they'll pull the plug and be like, okay, Dak could come back and play. Could that be the Rams game next week or the week after? We don't know. But right now, Cooper Rush is is, is winning. He's doing his job as a backup quarterback. I'm, I'm happy in what I'm seeing with, with Rush. But um, I am also looking forward to seeing our starting guy back in the lineup as well, especially with Peters in the lineup. Um, I don't think the Dallas Cowboys anticipated Tyler Smith to come in like he did and start playing well because, you know, they ended up signing Peters earlier. Um, I thought, I think that they were thinking, okay, well, he will put him at left tackle with his normal position, blah, blah. But when they put him in a guard, it was like, ooh, open run for Tony Pollard for 46 yards. Can we do that again? And can we do it on a more consistent basis? Can we get both him and the seat going? Because last game, you ran for over 170 some yards. Let's get that again combined with the thunder and lightning of Ezekiel Elliott and uh, Tony Pollard. Let's get that. Let's get that done. Um, but like I said, I'll do the matchup video this weekend. Let's get ready to whoop on these commanders in that uh, septic tank they call a stadium. But we're not playing at their home. They're playing. They're coming to Dallas. So, which is great because, you know, nobody wants to go to that FedEx field that's down the street from here where I am. <sighs> I hate living in the area where that stadium because every time I drive past, I just be like. It's terrible looking. <laughs> the only the only good thing about FedEx Field is the memorial locker of Sean Taylor. And those of you that follow my channel, I know a lot of you guys live in other areas. If you ever came here to to the DMV or Maryland in general, if you ever came to Landover, Maryland and you seen the, the the FedEx field. Um, if you ever actually got to look at Sean Taylor's lock, so what they did was those of you that don't, don't know, at FedEx field, not to give them any stripe, but I'm gonna show respect for Sean Taylor all the time because he was just a a great football player. Um, and I, and when I played linebacker, I modeled my tackling after him. I was a hard hitter, just like he was at safety. But anyway, um, he literally like like the way he left his locker is the way they left it. And when they took his locker out, they created a, a, a memorial where you could come and look at it and view it and see exactly how he left his locker. Everything that was there is is in that shrine. So just how he left it is is how it is. So I, just, I thought that was really good of the organization to do that for him. And, you know, just to commemorate the life and, and the football career of, of him. And I just thought that was a noble thing to do. But... Um, and I thought that was a good thing to say since we play against that team this week. So this is the first time we're playing the Washington team as the commanders. And guess what? They saved their best jerseys for us. Now, I'm not going to lie. Those black alternate jerseys that they have look kind of smooth. They're kind of slick. But they're wearing all black, right? The jerseys. 
and in the pants. Um, it's almost like they're setting up their own funeral, right? You wear all black to a funeral, correct? So it's going to be their funeral. And I just feel like, you know, when, when we put them to rest, we'll be eating at their repast. Oh, you like how I did that? Oh, anyway. With that being said, let me know what you guys think about this week's game against the Commanders. And and pay your respects to Gavin Escobar as well. Rest in peace to him. Um, like, share, subscribe to the channel. It's your boy E2Blue. Until next time, y'all have a great Friday.